Hi, um, some people out here at the Carrier Centre are actually using OpenOffice on the machines instead of Microsoft Office. Now OpenOffice has got a lot of the functionality that you'd find in uh, Microsoft Office and indeed for many applications it could well be a better choice because for a start you don't have all of the, um, the same difficulties in terms of degree of complexity because it is a slightly cut down version. Now this week we said we'd look at word processing. So what we're going to do is look at how we can actually create a text document. To create a text document, I click on text document. So there it is, there's our uh, text document here. And as you can see, it is not dissimilar from Word. So across the top, we've got our uh, title bar. And across this side here, we can actually see we've got the minimize to the taskbar button. We've got the maximize button to make it up to the biggest size or take it back down again and we've got the cross that would actually end the application. Of course at this side we've just got a, a little button that tells us that we're in open office and here it tells us that document is currently called untitled one and we're in open office writer. Below there we've then got the menu bar and as you can see that's currently called that because there's a menu with a bar on it and then we've got a toolbar which has got various bits and pieces of tools on and just by hovering your mouse over each of those it will actually tell you what each of those tools actually do. Now, down this side here, we can see we've got various properties such as text. And so we can actually choose what font we actually want to use. We've got the uh, bold and italic and that, that kind of thing. We've got various paragraph formats, but all of these will actually become apparent as we actually start to work. Now, below here, right at the bottom, it will tell us that we're currently on page one of one. That's reasonable, we haven't done anything yet. We're looking at it for as a default, so there's no changes there. It knows we're using English in the UK, so it's going to hopefully spell check properly. We're currently on insert mode. Now insert means that when we start to type, it will insert the text. Um, and the alternative to insert is when it would over type a text. So insert will allow us to insert text, over, um, over type would take the insert, uh, would allow us to over type. Now on your keypad, there is an insert key that would allow us to actually toggle between the two modes. So just pressing on the insert key would actually make that uh, difference. So I press insert, as you can see it now says over and insert puts it back on. Standard means that we're actually working in standard. And we can actually just um, ignore that for the moment. And then across this side, it can see us how we're going to be working. So. If I want to uh, type in some text, I can actually say this is some text. Um, and as you can see, my ability to use a keyboard is pretty dim. But, so what I can do is I can come back over here. And as you can see there, I could just move my cursor using my mouse and put it into place. And then because I put it after the P, I can delete that P. Or I could just use my arrow keys to move across. And if I put my cursor um, immediately before the character I want to remove, then I can press the del key because the delete key will effectively delete the character uh, that I'm sitting on. So I can now move around my text using my left and right arrow keys and move right to the end. So there I've got some text. Now if I wanted to start on a new line now, then I would press the enter key or the carriage return key, as some of us still uh, know it. And effectively, that will actually take us back to the beginning of a line. Now, it is important to note that, um, that when we are working with um, a, a word processor, see how my typing is atrocious. that the only time we would ever use the uh, return key is not at the end of the line. Oops. The only time we use the return key is not at the end of a line. But only the end of a paragraph. And what that means is that that uh, text actually wraps round when it reaches the end of the line. So therefore we can actually uh, type our words in properly 
and then we can go back once again and correct any mistypings. Now what I've done is I can see the words I've spelt incorrectly, or let's be more honest, the words that the machine has not recognised, and then just by holding down the right hand mouse key, it will actually allow me to see some alternatives, and I meant important. So there's word processor, I right click onto that, and word processor is two words, so therefore it's made that correction. I've spelled og instead of of, so I can hold that down, and then it will actually make some suggestion as to what I may have meant. Um, and one of those that's off the screen is of, so I can actually click onto that. So as you can see, I can go through, um, I'll put a full stop at the end of that, press return, and there I'm now starting to create my documents. Now, that is as easy as it gets in terms of being able to create a document. What we can then do is we can start to play with that document. So, for example, here is some text. I could actually sort of go onto that and decide that I would like that to be not a default paragraph, but I'd like it to be a heading one. And now it's made it into a heading one. Or perhaps I want it to be a heading two. Or a heading three. So again, I can actually make a decision about how I want the, uh, the paragraph to be. What I could also do is uh, say, for example, I wanted to highlight that. I could highlight the text and I can highlight the text either by holding the shift key down and using the arrow keys to go across a character at a time, or I could hold the mouse down and drag it across. So this is some text. And if I wanted that to be bold, then I would press the bold key. If I wanted it to be italic, I could press the I key for italic. Now that's bold and italic. And again, I could take those off if I wanted to. Now this is in Times New Roman. And Times New Roman is the shape of the characters that we're actually using. Now I don't particularly like Times New Roman, so I'm going to see whether I can find a font that I do like. Now Vidana is a font that I do like and I tend to use a lot. So there I've now changed that text there into the Vidana font. So it could be as easy as that in order to be able to make the changes. If I want to do anything with a file, such as save this document, I can just go to File and come down to where it says Save or Save As. Save would allow it to be saved, and if I've never named it anything before, it will ask me what I want to call this. So I'm going to call this Test in the best, uh, best traditions. However, now if I go in and type, uh, and type Save, Save is greyed out. However, I could save as and save it as a document under another name. So that is the way, uh, a very brief introduction to the Open Office Writer. Um, and we'll be looking at that tomorrow along with, uh, along with Microsoft Word. Hope that helps. Talk to you later. Cheers. Bye.